Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Imagine you've just asked somebody in your family to go to the store to grab some food. They've gone out. Next thing you hear is that they've been arrested. You don't know why. They're a great loving person. There's no problems. Many months go by. You still don't know why. And let's say it's been 30 years. You're still waiting for your family member to come home yet you still don't know why they've been arrested. This is a case or similar to this across the world, whether it's in the United States of America, whether it's in India or other parts of the world. But you know that there's fear even to today to send a family member out or in some certain place at a certain time because there's danger to them because of the way they look, simply. Whether we compare that to because of the color of the skin or because of a religious group that they associate with, maybe it's because of the way they look or the way they dress. They are labeled as terrorists they are labeled as uh, criminals. They're labeled as thugs, drug dealers, bad people. You know, the, when growing up, there was always an image in your mind of bad guys. Now you think what society has taught you, what are bad guys? And as you know the picture that's coming inside of your mind, Right there, that's the problem that society has given you. It's been taught to you that this is equals, this look equals bad. Yes, I'm talking about dark skin. I'm talking about somebody that might be black. Now, you might not care about it because it doesn't affect you. That's the problem. We never care about anything unless it's affecting us directly. You don't care if you're, that person's family member didn't come home because it's not your family member. You don't care if somebody's being shot on the street while they're, they just went for a jog. You don't care if s cops broke into somebody's house and shot your girlfriend, or they shot your mother, or they shot your children. Because it's not your family. It's that example or the analogy that we always hear. The house is burning on the other side of the world, but you don't care about it because it's not your house. You're sitting comfortably on your couch enjoying your blessings. But you know how we should think? We should think that the house on the other side of the world is burning. That means houses are able to burn. They can burn down. That means your house can burn down as well. So find the solution to houses burning down rather than my house burning down. And as soon as we say the word my, now we are identifying what the root problem of all of this chaos is, is ego. I think my skin color is better than yours. I think my look, my culture, my tradition is better than yours. We're unfamiliar with it. We don't know what the other side is. We've, we're living in duality. And because of this duality, you see the world is, is going into chaos. Now, I don't want you to think I'm reacting to things that are happening in the world today. It's not a reaction. It's a request. It's a pledge to take action. As a Sikh, this is meant to be my call. This is meant to be my life, my path of righteousness, is to spread food and freedom for everybody across the world. Now, here are some issues that I want to highlight. It's great to speak about the great successes of the black community. 
and support them and talk about it. But there won't be change in the overall issue of discrimination and racism because it's happening within our own communities, within the Punjabi community, within the Indian communities. For example, there is this word that we use. It's called Jura, a low caste. And it's used by almost every other Punjabi auntie or mother to say that, oh, we don't want to marry our daughter into that family or, oh, we don't want to move our house closer to them because they're jude, that they're like this. Why? And it's most of the time, they're, it's not because they're the actual caste, it's because they're dark-skinned. That's it. If somebody is dark-skinned, they're automatically lower on the social status, they're lower in beauty, they're lower in wealth, they're lower in marriage eligibility. This is something, look, if, if it's a cultural norm for you to tell your daughter to not go outside and play in the sun because she's going to get dark, she's going to get tanned, and therefore she's not going to get married properly. When that has become a norm and these dialogues are being used in, in movies, in comedy shows, in, in songs, that's where the root problem is. So yes, we need to go out and we need to support, uh, support and speak out against the racial discriminations that are happening, that have been happening with the black community. But first, let's look under our own belt. Somebody walks into your house, if the person's black, are you going to look at them in the same way? Are you going to treat them in the same way as if it was somebody of your own language, culture, religion, family circle? The solution to it is to actually be diving deeper within yourself and spreading this message of spirituality. Now, I don't want you to think that, oh, that's taking away from the protests or the actual issues of George Floyd's murder. No. Those issues, 100% must speak out against them and use them to highlight these issues that have been covered up by society because they've been happening. It's not that they haven't been happening. They've continuously been happening. And now it's just the cover is coming off. Now these things, each and every case, now you hear about something, oh, a black family was killed two months ago, three months ago, five months ago, six months ago. Well, how come we only heard about three or four cases? But it's been happening every single day, every single week. And there are so many stories that we don't know about. If there's a mother, I'm speaking to the Sikh community now. If there's a mother and we're celebrating these days, June 1984, there are mothers today still waiting for their sons to come home because the child went out to grab some food and the mother's still waiting for the child to return, and the person got shot just because of the way they looked. Racial profiling, cultural profiling. The same way it's been happening to black communities. And I know growing up, my friends and I, we connected to each other this way. We could relate to each other. We knew, because if I had a black friend, who they were speaking about, maybe they were talking about Tupac, they're talking about Martin Luther King, they're talking about these icons, these black icons, and how just their image itself is like revolution. In the same way, there's icons, myself as a Sikh, having icons of these great martyrs, of great revolutionaries, great charity givers, Great people who changed many people's lives, great saints. 
they spark revolution. They spark a revolution of love. They spark revolution of unity. I would like you to think about this example of a black coil bird. It's black on the outside, but it sings beautifully. It looks exactly like or similar to a crow. Somebody sees that bird and they shoo it away right away, but they don't realize the great virtues and the values that they had, all because their eyes created that illusion. We have created a society and we promote it on a regular basis. What you look like, what your clothes are like, you know, the capitalistic dream of a big house and a car. These are things that have been so socially normalized. We teach it to our children. We talk about it with our friends. And based on these physical things, we generate opinions. We associate certain things, certain people with certain items, the way they look, and then we judge them based on that. And in the same way, we judge this black bird based on it looks not to read, not to know that it can sing. It's with the most beautiful voice with different tunes that can entice the heart, that makes the ears go into awe. And that's why I'm saying we lose out in so many virtues in this world with just this racial profiling and looking at things just based on what their skin color is. Now that's very, very mild to what's actually happening with, with families being separated, constantly living in fear, living with a certain privilege. The difference with looking at your surrounding with ego or looking at it with compassion is this, that if you have blessings, you're blessed with a house and a car and finances and ability and social status, are you using that to put other people down and to feed your ego or are you using that to give back to the world, to bring everybody up, to uplift the world? Are you living in this ego? And this is why I think there's an even bigger issue in the United States of America because no matter where you look, if somebody has a spiritual or a religious background or they have a certain society, something that they kind of lean back on, they're still fed with something, some sort of information that shows them a higher perspective. But now if somebody is just living with their own little circle, their own little bubble, and all they see is their state. All they see is the people around them, the culture around them. They don't know what a turban is. They don't know what a, uh, a different language is. They don't know what somebody with a beard looks like, in, uh, let alone somebody that has green hair. And if you're in that type of area where your society is telling you that black people are like this, TV shows have told you, Different media sources have told you. People's opinions have told you this. And because of that, now you're constantly looking down upon this other person. You're living inside of this bug world. That's all you can believe. There's nothing else to lean, in, lean on. And so you have this one goal that you're focusing on of capitalism, of trying to make the best, become rich. It's all in the worldly possessions. All this is feeding your ego. Now, the solution to this is you can't change the world all in one snap. But what you can do is look under your belt and look at the little things that, that are happening around you. What are you doing? Are you opening all of your doors to people in need, to the black people in need in this day? If you have food, if you're blessed with food, and if time called for it, do you have the ability to give this food mentally and practically to take this food of yours 
and to give it out to people in the street or whoever comes out, he comes up to your door? Or are you going to hog it for yourself? Now we saw right away when the lockdown happened, people all went into hog mode. People said, I want to hog my toilet paper. I want to hog my ramen noodles. I want to hog my macaroni. That's it. People are hogging. That's ego right there. And then that is connecting to even further things. It's one domino to the next from discrimination to hogging food to putting other people down to slandering people. It's just going all and eventually that leads to shooting innocent people. Not seeing the person that's laying down in front of you as another human being. So you put your knee of oppression on their neck until they die. So my request is that we need to lift up this knee of oppression, but do it from all angles. So it's not just that we protest, we make a big ra a, a ruckus about it for about a week or two weeks, and then it goes back to the normal. No, this time, use this opportunity, because everybody's thinking about it right now, to highlight issues. Support the black community as much as you can. Stand beside them. Speak with them. Give them what you need. Become friends. We are brothers. We are sisters. We are family. And what we need to do is to be able to see that spark of God. That same light that's inside of you, inside of that other being. Now is the time to teach this, to preach it. To recognize all of mankind as one light. There's no difference. And to be honest, this begins from you doing it yourself first. Instilling compassion into your actions. So whether it's certain things in the Punjabi community where we love to live in a bubble, we don't like to talk to outsiders, let's tackle those issues. Tackle the issues of why is dark skin considered bad and white skin considered beautiful? Are we labeling things? Are we promoting it? And to be honest, the, the modernized Punjabi culture has moved so away from its actual beautiful roots that has just become a negative propaganda machine. It's promoting caste, it's promoting color, it's promoting social status, it's pushing people more and more towards mater material indulgence. So that caves their mind. And as soon as your mind caves, you can't see outside of your own shell then these types of issues happen and that's why I think most of the world has for the, maybe the last 60 years or maybe hundreds of years to be honest thousands of years to be honest they've been living with these the shells and we thought that it's been covered up in the last hundred years but no it's not it's been there we've put a blanket on it it's happening hundred years ago, it's happening today. So that's why now is the time to stand up. Food and freedom for all, that is our mission. We are going to walk, we are going to march, we are going to tackle these issues together. There will come a time when there's a shortage of food, when the things that you are hoarding, the things that you are attached to, they're not there anymore. And at that time, you're going to have to let go of these things and it's going to hurt you. So prepare yourself now to share love, to grow your mentality in such a way that you're able to survive in the worst of circumstances. Why? Because we have each other. Wahiguruji ka khalsa, Wahiguruji ki fateh.